Hey, how's it going? Yeah, it has. It is uh, going crazy on Twitter right now. The uh, former uh, chairman of it, uh, Nitro, is just really losing his mind. <laughs> I did for about five minutes and I took it off my phone. Nothing but Trump ads and bigotry. So I will not be staying on that app. Uh, uh, no comment. Mm -hmm. Um, Lifty, check check the match at. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties right now with the audio. Lifty cannot, unfortunately, be heard. Um, so we're going to clear that up right away for you guys. I, I can hear you. Do 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 do
do do do do do do do do Hold up, hold up. I'm trying to see if it comes through. <clears throat> it does not come through. No. Hello. Does it work now? It works now. It's working. Hey, how's it going? Um, no, we can't. Yeah, we're having more difficulties, guys. Uh, so sorry about this. I am happy. Lord. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello? If you can hear me, speak up. Tell me that you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Now I'm now it should be coming through. Can you hear me? Hold up. Okay. Yep, I can hear you. Alrighty. Sorry about that, uh, listeners. We've had some uh, audio issues on our on, on our end, and we've got them fixed up. Sorry about that. So anyway, I'm Lifty, and joining me on the podcast this evening is Silox. Hey, how's it going? Okay, so um, I know we've had some audio issues and we've just gotten resolved. So we've kind of cut 10 minutes off our time. So we're just going to kind of make things quick and go to get to the chase. Starting off yeah. with the return of CCFC to Twitter. Um, CCFC made a surprising reappearance on Twitter this evening. And oh my God, it is not the uh, it is not the resurgence that anybody was hoping out of CCFC. If anybody was hoping that uh, CCFC would return, because um, first of all, Nitro. Let's start from the very beginning. So Nitro has kind of wormed his way back into Twitter. We talked about this uh, in our last podcast, I believe, where um, mm -hmm. he was. He, he made his way back and he, he made a new 
account and all that just for himself. But this time he made a new he made a new Twitter account called Cider the Donkey. And um, here's what it did look like the header. Um, the notice that the uh, the uh, the first suit that is pictured here in the uh, profile pic isn't actually his. So what happened is that Sky Pro Costumes had a had a uh, had a auction for this donkey fursuit and um and they they went up to ten thousand dollars so guess who came up and offered ten thousand dollars for this fursuit it was none other than nitro and everybody was shocked because i was i was like whoa what the fuck what is he doing with ten thousand dollars where did he get ten thousand dollars and of course, it's Nitro's bullshitting again, yet again. Um, but then, it, but it gets even worse than that. So, what happened is that um, somebody tried to message him, and this is what they got when they messaged him. They actually got a picture of Nitro right here. Oh my God! Look at that is Nitro. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's you know it's Cider the Donkey. Of course, you can tell it's Cider the Donkey. There's his profile pic again at Cider the Donkey to contacts, and you know whoever he talked to, you look familiar. I don't know if we ever talked, huh? Yeah, I do wonder about that myself too. So this is what started this entire suspicion of who Cider the Donkey is and. What is his connection to Nitro? Of course, is you know Nitro. Um, so this cider donkey dude was actually getting into a lot of chats on Telegram that he was originally banned from. Yeah. Um, one of which is furthermore, we'll talk more about furthermore in a bit. Um, but a lot of these chats were, of course, chats that he was permanently banned for life from. And. He he tries to he tries to play it off here as him is as he's not he, he's not this um, he's not cider cider is his cousin well the, um, so Saros the vendor horse was the person selling the suit and decided they're gonna cut off the uh, the sale once they find out who is in or who's behind cider and they find out it's nitro yeah. <laughs> I, I just love how he keeps on saying yeah my cousin is going through grief because the cfcfc bullshit no it's not bullshit it's all true he did um steal for over four thousand dollars from als but he refused to pay back the um he refused to pay back the charity that he was sponsoring with CCFC. Um, and yet he calls it bullshit, which is amazing. But then he went one step further. Let's look at this. And he reopened the Capital City FurCon Twitter. Look at this. Hello, everyone. This is the one and only Nitro. I have just gotten word that I will be getting locked for a very long time. <laughs> Oh, and of course, here he comes again with uh, Cider. My cousin Cider Donkey will be using and monitoring everything on here. He has nothing to do with the failure of CCFC, blah, blah, blah. I want this to go down in history. It already is. Or Cider, Nitro, whatever you want to call yourself. It already is going down in history as one of the biggest failures in furry history. Almost up there with Rainforest, but I don't think Rainforest can be top. Not, not yet. I, uh, uh, you certainly tried, but no, no, you, you even failed in that regard. And I want to say that all of my staff sucked. Well, you sucked even harder. Like if this was a dick sucking contest, you'd be the king. 
Oh, and it just keeps going and on and on and on like this. He tries to deflect people away from Cider, think, saying that this is supposed to be his cousin that's buying this $10,000 fursuit. But it's free mints, though, exclamation point. Free mints. Free mints. Oh, my oh, goodness. Free oh, mints. So good. And, of course, um, Trip, he comes back to uh, take the piss out of Nitro and CCFC one more time. Just be, just when you thought that CCFC was long dead, here they come rising up from the ground to uh, wreak havoc once again like a damn zombie. And then here's the best part. Capital City Furcon, a convention, a dead convention nonetheless, responds with shove it up your ass <laughs> and everybody just just like everybody's just like in shock because like oh, this is a convention they just said a swear <laughs> and oh my goodness so i i can i can go on and on so here is the Capital City FurCon Twitter now reopened for all of your gaze and wonderment. And it just, they just keep going on and on. Some of these tweets are in all caps like this one. And everybody is just taking the piss. Everybody. Ah. Uh. If you want war and falsely accuse me, then fine. If you didn't want a con, then I wouldn't have did what I did to make it happen. Everyone in this fandom is a fake and a lies. And what kind of community is this? Rafer <laughs> is did, did 100% worse than CZ. I think he's having a stroke. At this point, I think he's having a stroke. <laughs> and something, all right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like like, I, I don't, I don't get, I don't know why, well, I know why he's doing this, but I just think that there are better ways to cope with the impending, um, warrant for your arrest being issued. Let's just say that. I mean, this is, this is great. You're watching, you're watching a man have a mental breakdown in real time. Yeah. You are, yeah. and it's not fun to see, but this is someone who unfortunately scammed thousands from ALS. And he so, blames it, and he blames it on the staff and the people who attended. And this is a furry convention Twitter that is just going off on everyone and everything within earshot. And of course, this is this is somebody from from UK. That's just watching all this and baking a bucket of popcorn while they're watching all this. Oh my goodness. Uh, he tries to blame Oval Top for mishandling the money directed for ALS, which, you know, that wasn't her department. And then mm -hmm. blame the co chair for trying to goad Trip into donating $15,000 of his um, college tuition money to the convention and of course it didn't happen no that was nitro too um it was all nitro i think this convention was 100 percent a failure on nitro's part it's just that um nitro just doesn't see it that way he just wants to blame everyone and everything around him for everything instead of taking responsibility like a man uh let me see where is the best tweet i saw I saw a really great tweet in this in this cascade of shit. Um, oh, right here, right here. This is Comedy Central. <laughs> I guess that's what CC stands for now, Comedy Central. Yep. Co Comedy Central for a con. Yeah. <laughs> and then somebody responded with, Bitch, it's the circus. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't get much more bizarre than this. I he like might... This. He might have had the most bizarre um, crash and burn I think I've ever seen from a furry. He, he might have that. 
because this no one expected this though this it's not like this had been building over months and months and months and he had been active or semi-active on twitter no he had largely gone underground and was trying to start this new identity in the fandom and then lo and behold tonight he just loses his mind and says the shit that you see that's being said right now on twitter and to make matters worse he's larping he's larping as his cousin. His cousin, his quote unquote cousin. So it's like he's clearly going through a mental breakdown. Yeah. And it's sad to see. It's really sad to see. Oh, it is kind of sad to see, but also it's a bit of Schadenfreude that a lot of people are just looking at this. They're you know, they're 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 sharing in the Schadenfreude that we're seeing here because this dude really screwed a bunch of people out of at least four thousand dollars worth of donations and not only that they screwed out the als association exactly like, that they did and um it's uh and it's it's really a shameful it's really shameful it's a black eye in our community especially towards the als association because we really revered the als association after the after the passing of dog bomb mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure that's why Nitro decided to pick ALS for their association to associate with in this convention because he knew or he saw the outpouring of support for Dog Bomb and he wanted to kind of ride that wave somewhat. He wanted to do a good thing, but he wanted to do it for the clout. He wanted to do it because Dog Bomb was... You know, such a revered figure in in the furry community, and so he wanted to kind of leech off of those, uh, off of the uh, the coattails of dog bombs, so to speak. And so now we have this, and then he tries to blame Trip as the person who tried to offer the fifteen thousand dollars to keep the convention running. He didn't have the money, and I go it here. Oh my goodness. So so here Ginny tries to get the truth out and of course about the $15,000 and she goes and says that Nitro tried to pressure Trip out of $15,000 for this convention. And first of all he blames Trip saying he's the one that offered Mm -hmm. And then he's, and then when Ginny says, well, when he said, no, it's not happening, you still tried to pressure him for that money. And then he comes back and says, oh, no, I didn't do that. That was Garrett, the co-chair. This, this man does not know how to take responsibility for anything. No, he doesn't. He's good at passing the buck off to other people and then trying to play innocent and act as if he's somehow the victim of yeah. some... Body else's, um, but also notice wrongdoing. notice this right here. I'm just hovering my cursor around Cider Donkey, the uh, alt sona that he had. Um, he deleted that. He deleted that. So what does that tell you? That of course he didn't have a cousin. Mm. He everything was made up. The whole Cider Donkey persona that he had uh, that he had here. This was actually taken off the the uh, auction site. This picture, he doesn't actually have the suit. What I heard was that he tried to manipulate the uh, the person who was selling it into sending the suit first, and then he would send the money. He offered ten thousand dollars for that suit. And of course, with ten thousand dollars, you could pay ALS Association. You can pay back everybody that owes money, and you still have a little bit of money left for at least a decent partial. But no, this is this is Nitro we're talking about here. When he steals money, he has to go large or go home. And uh, and what you're seeing now is a complete a complete meltdown when people aren't being so. Um, hospitable towards you knowing what you did and they know who you are and they know that you can't cover it up and they know that the walls are closing in on you Nitro 
So this is just a big show of attention for some reason. And, oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, so here he goes on Obel again. Wow, so, yeah, here we go. So, people, of course, calling out CCFC or Nitro, because that's the only person behind Nit or CCFC right now. Um... So this person's calling out ALS and saying that the ALS money did not go to ALS. And of course, Nitro blames Obeltop. Obeltop had nothing to do with it. She was the uh, she was the manager of the dealer's den. And and of course, he says, stop taking sides. They were complete toward her. And if there were year two, she would have been gone. Well... I'm not going to take sides of Obeltop, but I'm just saying that Obeltop wasn't responsible for $4,000 going missing that was supposed to go to charity. That was you, Nitro, because you were the person that handled the money. You did not hire a finance manager to handle that money. You did not have a liaison from the ALS Association be on site to handle the money and to actually have the money received after the charity auction and all the money has been counted. So that's on you. But yeah, this is this is all really, really sad. But we can tell that um, the walls are closing in on Nitro. And this is even more incriminating than the Nitro just nuking the CCFC Telegram or Twitter. Because this means that he has a direct tie to CCFC now. He has a direct tie to their social media. So he can't deny this. He can't deny his involvement with CCFC now. He's gotten himself roped in. So if the DA comes knocking, you know, what are you going to do, Nitro? And we go back to... Um, who is that dude? Who is that dude that tried to take the piss on us when we when we tried to take the piss on Nitro? Remember, remember that, Salox? Salox? That yeah, Salox has gone radio silent tonight. Let me see what's up. Hey, Salox, are you there? Okay, we're having more difficulties. Uh, apparently, Silox has gone radio silent. Hmm. So, um, so I'm just going to keep going. Uh, I'm just going to wrap this up. Um, this is just really, really sad. The longer it goes like this, because this is, of course, this is of course definitely showing a man who's having a mental breakdown here, and. I think he knows what's coming next for him. So I don't I don't really know what to say other than try not to engage with CCFC right now. This is this is definitely something that is best handled from a from a distance and just, you know, watch and observe what is going on in real time because this is just really really sad. And, um, and yeah, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for Nitro to just come out and say, Hey, you know what? I give up. I did it. I, I fess up to it. I fess up and then I'll stop taking the piss on him. But you know what? This is, this has been well, how long has this been just kind of like sitting? This has been sitting for close to over a year just been sitting and festering and now that uh, there's an investigation going on and the DA might be knocking on on Nitro's door looking for information things are about to get heated and we're going to be bringing more coverage 
of uh, CCFC as it happens, as we learn more. Um, obviously, this is as much as we have. So we will keep you posted on what happens next to Capital City Furcon. So um, beyond that, we wanted to also talk about a uh, sign of things to come for 2021 because uh, another piece of information that has uh, that has surfaced over the past weekend is this. This is a letter from Mid-Atlantic Anthropomorphic Association. They are the organization that is in charge of, furthermore, they are a local convention here in Arlington, Virginia. It's a great convention. You, you should come. And come to Arlington. Yes, very, very, yes, yes. Very nice here. Very nice. Come to Arlington. Come to Arlington. Yes. Well, after COVID, after COVID. So anyway, they announced this letter, which is supposed to be an update on furthermore 2021. And this comes, um, and this comes roughly 13 days after their uh, panel submission form closed. So go ahead and just uh, put that into context. But basically, um, they're saying, for furthermore, while there is a certain appeal to the thought of being one of the last before, then to be the first in-person furry event to the pandemic, after the, uh, excuse me, pandemic, the leadership of the convention came to the difficult decision at our September 10 meeting to open discussions with our hotel about canceling our in-person event. So what they're saying is that it's already October. They're, they're, still planned so far to have an event in March of 2021. So in five months. And they're already saying that they may cancel. And um, let me see. The, um, the pandemic was showing signs of slowing and there was optimism at the prospect of having an event. However, the microcosm of our staff opinions indicated that the furry community in general will be reluctant to attend an event prior to either a definitive all clear or the widespread availability of a viable vaccine. Okay, time out, time out, time out. So I'm, I'm going to criticize this harshly because one, it is five months away, and this is showing that there is a, a big lack of, um, of, there's a big lack of, of confidence in our ability to contain the virus and actually bring it down to a point where it's no longer a public threat. Um, we don't have any word on what will be the gathering ban limit in Virginia. Right now, currently, it's 50% of occupancy or 250 people, whichever is less. That's noted here in the letter. But we may actually go up to 100% by March, and yet we're not considering that. I'm, I'm harshly criticizing this because I do feel like we have an ability to manage this, this pandemic and also manage it in a way that is, um, is possible to make an event like Furthermore happen again. I personally, I feel that if somebody was if they were to host this event again in 2021, I would attend. Of course, granted, I would be, you know, having masks and social distancing myself from others. And I wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't be in crowded rooms. I wouldn't be go going to room parties, of course. But I would still attend. Because one thing that our community desperately wants is a com is the same thing that any community would desperately want right now and it's a sense of normalcy they want we want to return to normalcy and having restaurants open 
having theaters open, having businesses open, have, being able to visit your loved ones in a nursing home. Granted, we're still just wearing masks. We're still social distancing. But I think it's a step in the right direction when everything else is reopening. And so what I'm thinking is, how come, how come we are not reopening the furry community? Or at least we're not taking the proper steps to reopen safely. I don't think that, I don't think that holding out and saying that, oh, well, we need to shut down and, you know, for our event in March just makes any sense, especially since you, especially since this event has been pushing and pushing for people to put in an application for panels all the way up to September 30th. And now it's October 12th and they're saying, well, actually, no, there's a September 10th meeting saying we're saying that we might have to discuss shutting down furthermore 2021 then why didn't we know then why are we knowing now i i i had the i had the impression that this event was still going full steam ahead and it might just because the letter states that the hotel is not open to discussions about cancellation until December, which puts the event in a dilemma. In December, they would have to finalize their contracts with their suppliers, with their vendors, and basically start forming a bona fide convention plan if they haven't already. If they have to push until December, they're of course going to be losing a ton of money if they have to cancel in December um, because they have to pay all of these contracts that um, ultimately <laughs> won't materialize. Um, I think I hear some faint signs of life from uh, Seagirt up in, or from Silox up in Seagirt. Hello, Silox, you're on Furry Frequencies. Hello. Silox. And he's down again. Damn it. Ugh. So unfortunately, our um, our resident foot correspondent is out. So it's uh, just left to me to fill in the void for a minute. Um, so up, oh, up. Oh, I hear some more faint signs of life. Silox, if you can hear me, fart into the microphone. I don't, I, I, I don't think, I, I don't think. Okay, so hold on a bit. So I'm going to see if I can fix this. Oh, excuse me. So anyway, I'm going to see if we can have somebody fill in just at a moment's notice. Hello? Oh, oh, I hear some faint signs of life. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I have no idea what just happened. The internet <laughs> at my house just completely shut off. Um, so yeah. I apologize about that. Okay, great. So um, we're talking about furthermore, mm -hmm. and we're talking about the letter that they posted um, yesterday about um, their possibility about the possibility of them having to shut down the event or have to yeah hold it. What what's your take? So my take is this: I think that they are playing. Um, an unfortunate game that should not be played, and it's not their fault. Um, it's the fault of the venue, because the venue uh, can't decide if they want to have this event, because there will be no restrictions at the time, um, assuming based on the current trends that they're looking at, or they are assuming, well, you know, restrictions will come back, might as well not have it at all. 
And so, again, it's not fair that furthermore that this has to happen. Um, what I do think, though, is that if this does happen, we're going to see a situation where you're going to have uh, people attend this convention. I don't know how many will attend, but people will attend. And you're also going to see instances of social distancing, um, wearing a mask, a lot of hand sanitizer, and other methods used to curtail the chance of contracting COVID-19. Well, no, Silox, I disagree with you. I don't mm -hmm. think it's the, it's the fault of the venue. The venue wants to host this event. The venue wants this event to go on. That's... That's obvious. Now, the problem I see is that Mid-Atlantic Anthro Association, if they were having cold feet about this event happening in March, if they knew back in September 10th, we should have known on September the 12th. Or we should have known as early as possible, but we were kind of given the impression that everything was uh, full steam ahead, and mm -hmm. they were pushing for people to put in their application for panels all the way through September 30th. They were. So, if, like I said, if they were having cold feet, I don't think that they would have been so gung-ho about pushing everything as normal. I think we should, we as attendees, have a right to know if our event that we are putting money towards is going to happen or not as early as possible. Now, you know, October 12th, yeah, it, it's five months out. It's less than five months out. But um, at this time, people may have already made their plans. They've already, they may have already booked the rooms. They may have already uh, bought their membership. They, have, they may have already had plane tickets. Uh, you don't know what exactly people have already planned for this for this event and um, so I'm, I'm just gonna say this I want this event to happen and I mm. want and I want everybody to look at it from a optimistic point of view I'm hoping that by March we will have no restrictions on 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 uh, gatherings none that we'll be able to host our event exactly as we have, and we'll be the first, furthermore, we'll be the first convention that will have an uninterrupted streak throughout the COVID pandemic. It was the last medium-sized furry convention to be hosted before COVID. And it, it will be, last? and it will be, well, not quite the last, but it was the first medium-sized furry convention to, to have its entire event happening with no interruption uh blue ridge fur fair had an interruption they had oh, to cancel yeah. they had to cancel their sunday festivities uh because of the coronavirus so um so it was pretty much just friday and saturday i believe so they had to cut their festivities short we d the, furthermore did not have to and it would be fun it would be great to see furthermore come back in 2021, I mean, even if it doesn't bring in the numbers like 2019 did, I would still, it would still be, it would still be, I think, a triumphant sight. It would be a show of a return to normalcy, like I was speaking, to see furthermore again in Arlington in 2021. It would give everybody the breath of fresh air that we need. To know that, yes, things are finally going back to normal. And it finally will stop feeling like 2019's Furthermore was a decade ago or a century ago. It feels like an entire era ago. Because you look at Crystal City now compared to Crystal City then and it's just, it's two completely different worlds. It's like, um, it's like a vaporwave video. Like looking back in the memories, <laughs> in the memories of Furthermore 2019, and it's like it's a vaporwave video. Like, does it even exist? Did it even happen? 
Because Crystal City right now is nothing like that. Absolutely nothing like that. People are walking on, on the sidewalk with masks. They're trying to social distance. The, uh, the, uh, the scooters that you would see all, everywhere, they're almost yeah. non-existent. I mean, Crystal City is a completely different place now. All because of COVID. Now, that may be true, but again, I don't think that by the time March rolls around, we'll be at that point to where we can say, okay, we need to lift all restrictions. And, well, and, and that's you know what? not if the that's, fault. If, that's, if, that's, mm. if the government says that we need to host, we need to hold restrictions on gatherings, then yeah. I can understand furthermore stance because that's a government decision that's not on them. That's not on them. That's not on the hotel. They have to follow government guidelines. But I'm just surprised also that nowhere in this letter is it ever discussed about postponing the event to a later time in the year. Well, there may not be a chance to do that with the schedule. There may not be nothing. There may not be a time where furthermore can that, that, postpone. That's fair. That's fair. I, I'm just saying, before you cancel, furthermore, I would, mm -hmm. I would, when you're in discussions or negotiations with the hotel, I would negotiate with the hotel. Is there a time that we can postpone the event and host it at a later time, later date? I would be... That's fair. Yeah, I would be, I would honestly be more comfortable with furthermore being set in a different different time of the year if it came to be that way instead mm -hmm. of them just canceling the event have them oh. postpone it that way you can roll over your hotel room if you have one to the next date you can roll over you can cancel your flight and put the money of that flight towards the later flight it's very easy now thanks to covid um, hotels and, and airlines have made it very easy for people to cancel their reservations and move that reservation to a later time. It works for everyone. But I'm saying that canceling might screw the community a lot more than just postponing it or even having to hold it. And also, um, remember when this, uh, back in February... Um, I was in the furthermore chat and people were, you know, a little worried about COVID and the spread of COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one question that was asked was, um, is the event going to be canceled due to COVID? And of course the answer was no, because it's February, everything is already set and, um, canceling at such a, at, um, at such a short notice would make it very, very financially difficult for the convention. For the convention. Yeah. However, they did state that if people decide not to come to, because of the coronavirus, they will roll over their membership to the next year, which is fine. And I'm just saying that if you feel uncomfortable with attending a convention in March, mm -hmm. people should be given the opportunity to roll over their membership to the next year. They shouldn't have to be forced to attend or not attend. And they shouldn't also, and I don't think that, uh, and, I, and I really don't think that um, canceling the event is the best option. I think if people don't want to attend, just have them roll over and have whoever does attend, you know, use that, use that membership for this year, for 2021. Well, I don't think they want to cancel either because if they cancel, remember, they still have to pay, live up to their contract. It's not as if the, the people's, the hotel says, uh, says, okay, well, there was no event, so we're going to just ignore the contract for this year. No, they still have to honor their contract. And if they end up canceling, well, they don't have finances probably to honor the contract. And if they do for this year, well, that may put them in a financially difficult spot in 2022. Yeah. 
Yeah, I which understand that. brings up a good point about not just Furthermore, but a lot of other cons who are also going to be in this predicament that Furthermore is in, unfortunately, where they have to decide if they want to cancel and potentially go under because they can't live up to their contract for two years in a row or take their chances at hosting during a pandemic hoping that people show up to the event and one convention that it instantly comes to mind is for a week in atlanta or fwa um it's no secret that they botched last year at least me this year they botched the whole refund by giving half away and keeping half which yeah. many thought was okay that's very weird no other convention is doing that maybe there's something going on behind the scenes there's some financial um impropriety of course no one can prove that but you know also it doesn't take a genius to realize huh if no other convention even the largest ones are taking half the money and this is the only one that's doing that there's something going on behind the scenes well FWA is located in Atlanta, which is in the state of Georgia. Uh, Brian Kemp, the governor of Georgia, has made it known that he does not want any restrictions when it comes to get social distancing, gatherings, and mask wearing. And he has put out an executive order that has lifted all restrictions and prevents um, local jurisdictions from putting in restrictions on gatherings and social distancing. What does that mean for FWA? Well, it means that they can technically host in 2021. Yeah. Now, should they in the middle of a pandemic? That's the well, question. The, that Silox, I need to but Silox, you don't know what the pandemic will be like in 2021. Neither does do they, neither does anyone. Like I said in this podcast before, nobody has a crystal ball saying or showing how this pandemic will play out in mm -hmm. the future there there is a point where playing it safe becomes playing it too safe and eventually it's just it, it's um it's to your detriment it's to fwa's detriment it's to any other furry convention's detriment to sit out for another year, especially when they do not have the financial resources to sit out for two years in a row. And they don't have any capital flowing into the convention to keep it afloat for that year where they're not doing anything. True, but also it it's still a moral issue though. Even if we're on the tail end of a pandemic, and let's say that we are, um, I don't think many people would feel safe attending a furry convention knowing that we're still, even though we're coming out of one, it may not be safe. Well, and let's now, if it's, I'll say, I'll say this if things get better and we go, we suddenly wise up and we go the way of Europe did and we get our numbers way down, okay, then yes, I can see a case being made that yes, we can host a furry convention. But if we're still where we are, or if we're at the tail end of this pandemic and it's still going on, but not to the point, not to where we were a year, a year earlier, then, you know, maybe it's not morally right for them to have you know, five, six, seven thousand people gather for three days in a confined space. And you and me, we can't answer that. We can't tell them what to do. We don't have that authority. Um, the chair people or whoever, whoever, the, whoever's the chair at FWA, that is their decision to make. If it should come to that, if they want to host for that year. Yeah. And um, I hope they make the right decision. Well, what I'm saying is, you know, if people... What I'm just saying is that in the future, in, in March or in June or whenever these furry cons are being hosted, mm -hmm. we don't know how the pandemic will play out. I think 
over time, I think this pandemic is going to just, the, the wave is cresting and it's just going to just slope down. And I really think that over time, we're going to see a reopening of the furry community. It's going to start with, you know, small meetups. Okay. And they're just going to grow with larger meetups and larger meetups. And people, I have a faith. I have faith that people will be safe. I have faith that people will do the right thing. And if they don't want to attend on concerns about con coronavirus, they will sit it out instead of making the entire event sit out. They will sit out. And that's fine. I'm not going to judge people that decide they don't want to go to these large events and fear getting exposed. But, again, I think for sitting out for two years in a row is not financially viable for a lot of furry conventions. For, for any convention, to be, to be honest, I don't think it's financially viable. So, they're, so if they have the power to do so like they do in Georgia, like you mentioned, or if they do in Florida, Ron DeSantis, he lifted all restrictions from Florida a few weeks ago. If they have the power to do so, I think they will do it. They will go ahead with their events as planned, as scheduled, pandemic or no pandemic. They ask the people to make that decision for themselves. Should they attend or should they not? If they have people that are at risk at home and, they, and there's a risk of disease transmission from this event to people at home, it's probably best that they take that decision not to stay home and not take this decision lightly. Um, if they themselves have uh, conditions that might make uh, COVID uh, diagnosis complicated, then I would hope that they would take it upon themselves to save themselves and not risk you know, going out there in large in large gatherings until they feel safe it's about it's a matter of how do you feel how safe do you feel about this pandemic how comfortable do you feel around other people do you feel that what we're doing right now with masks and social distancing do you feel like that's enough do you feel like we need to do more do we need to do less i'm that's what we have to ask the people we don't have to this isn't something that should be that should fall on the responsibility of these events. These events have a responsibility to themselves to be hosted. Otherwise, they're going to just hurt themselves when they sit out for another year and take the financial burden that comes with that. And yeah. and, uh -huh. and 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 if people if the attendees decide to sit it out, I would hope that these events be at least uh, courteous and extend that courtesy to the attendees to roll over their, their membership to the next year or offer a full refund like most conventions have had instead of you know being a dick and saying, well, you're only going to get this much instead of you know getting the full amount but that's to be determined as well but i'm saying that this is a decision that the attendees have to make because i know the the attend that this has been racking on mental health people want a sense of normalcy and when you don't have a sense of normalcy it wrecks your mental health furries want to come back to furry conventions and they want to come back safely but there's got to be a, 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 a there's got to be a balancing point between those two. You, you want to say something? Think that so I get what you're saying, and I understand where you're coming from. I just think that just because you can doesn't mean you should, and it's not. I, if I was hosting, if I was a chairman of a furry con, and if, let's say, my state loosened the rules, 
to where they don't exist. And I had a chance to hold a furry convention. I wouldn't feel safe doing that. And I would feel bad if I actually did that. I get what you're saying. Yes, furries want to attend a furry convention and want to go to furry meets. However, if it's not safe for them to do so, we shouldn't be encouraging them to do so by having them. And I get it, though. You want people to make these decisions on their own. The problem is, and this is going to sound fucked up, the problem is the average person is not smart enough to make their own decision and yes that sounds completely fucked but when you see how some of these people operate what goes through their minds and and how do they function on a daily basis you start to realize that okay yeah some of these people really shouldn't be allowed to make their own decisions because they do stupid stuff yes furry cons are fun but it's not responsible to even dangle the idea of having a furry convention during a pandemic. Well, because like I said, just... I said, like I said before, you don't know what the pandemic will be like in 2021. I don't. I don't, I don't either. Right. I don't either. But what I'm I'm optimistic about is that we won't have a pandemic in 2021. It, it, I'm not saying that as soon as January 1st, 2021 happens, that finally the pandemic is over. No. I think once, I think during the winter season, I think it's going to start to, the, the number of cases, the number of new cases is going to decline. We're going to see that 14-day decline all over this country. And once we start going into that decline, and mm -hmm. once we start not overburdening our hospitals and our clinics and our nurses and doctors that are out there every day treating people, once we have a handle on treatment for this pandemic, you'll start to not see it as a pandemic anymore. It'll start to be an epidemic. And then again, we'll start the process of regaining normalcy in society. We'll start to regain normalcy in the furry community. And that's what I think people want. Well, they do, but I also say that I think us hoping that the numbers will go down goes against conventional wisdom when, you know, it'll be in a colder environment where the virus can thrive more. So I, while it's nice to be optimistic... The virus, I, I, the virus might survive more in a colder yes. environment, but it might mutate into a weaker strain. Viruses have a habit of mutating to weaker forms over time. And, you know, what's to say that that won't happen to COVID? That's what, what, fair. What's, yeah, what's stopping anybody from... Uh, now, somebody might come out with some research and says, oh, no, it's actually mutating into stronger strains. And then, you know, that blows my, my hypothesis out of the water. But... Viruses do have, do tend to, over time, mutate into milder strains with less harmful effects over time. And, you know, what's to say that that won't happen with, uh, with COVID? That, that's certainly possible. Yeah, yeah. it's entirely possible. But yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that I'm optimistic that in 2021, we're going to see a decline in the number of cases and we're going to see this pandemic become an epidemic and it's going to be less of a hassle of a burden on our daily life i'm optim optimistic for that and i'm hoping that other furry conventions see it as such and are able to begin the process of reopening begin the process of returning the furry community back to normalcy um I don't believe that. I don't believe that uh, you should bubble wrap the community. You should bubble wrap the world in order to declare it safe. There's no point in that. It's just excess effort. When it, we could definitely manage our own life and safely go out and do all these things with masks and social distancing. 
if it if if we have to limit how many people attend in a certain year, so be it. But mm -hmm. at least have the event so that we can restore a sense of normalcy, so that we know that our life is going back on track. And I'm 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 saying that it, closing the the events once more isn't going to help the furry community. It's going to actually be a detriment to the furry community. It's going to uh, it's going to make a lot of furry cons not come back for 2022 um, when they have to sit out for two years in a row. And this is gonna this is gonna break the furry community if this continues on. I don't think it'll break the furry community, and I, I would say that. I mean, again, people want these events to come back, and they and they want cons to come back. Exactly. But people are also mindful that until it's safe to do so, we can't do so. Well, no, and, no, no, no. I, I don't think I don't think it's about until it's safe. I think it's I think people are just like. When, when can we go out? And that, and what I'm saying is, mm -hmm. we can go out. We can go out. We just need to be careful about it. We wear masks. We wear so we we social distance all the time. Like we can take the steps to create a safer environment for furry cons, and we should. And honestly, what we should do right now is start on a small scale to reopen. And start furry meets again, you know, mindful, mindful of um, gathering restrictions in your area. You don't want to run afoul of gathering restrictions. So if um, so, if there's a gathering restriction, please be mindful of it. But what that's what we should start. We should start making plans to reopen the furry community, starting locally with furry, you know, furry meets having some kind of uh, of outings where everybody wears masks, everybody social distance. Maybe we have to limit how many people come into this little group outing. But, you know, at least we are taking the steps to reopen and actually return to normalcy, like I've been saying. Um, but um, anyway, I think we've got to cut it short for that, for, for this. Um, we've kind of run long on our time. Um, so anyway, thank you listeners for joining us again for another exciting episode of Furry Frequencies. If you like what you hear, please feel free to follow us on Twitter at Furry Frequencies or Furry Frequency, sorry, and follow us on Twitch at Furry Frequencies. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our videos on YouTube. And um, ring that bell for notifications on our next upload. Ring the bell. Yes, ring that bell. Anyway, with that said, this is Furry Frequencies signing off with Lifty. Silox. And we hope that uh, you enjoyed this episode and that you come back to us and listen to us next week. Have a good night. Good night, Compton. Good night, Baltimore.